Cool. Well, I'm going to kick it off a little bit. Hi, everyone. Happy to kick off the next session here at Dapper Day today. Super excited uh, about being here in the fifth anniversary of Dapper. Uh, we have a great user and user case study from sharperimage.com, an online retailer in the United States. Uh, my name is Alice Gibbons, and I'm head of customer success here at Diagrid and have been involved in the Dapper project as well for, you know, a the last almost four years of my career. And I worked on this session with Aaron, but in this case, it's really his story to tell. So, you know, this is kind of the story of how he came and Sharper Image came to adopt Dapper over the past two years. And we are super fortunate enough to have worked with the team uh, back when a number of us were at Microsoft, but then now they're our customer at Diagrid. Um, and they were also early adopters and influencers of our conductor product that automates Dapper on Kubernetes. So with that, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to hand it over to Aaron, uh, as well as be available for, for any other questions that uh, kind of come up. Thanks so much, Aaron. Over to you. Perfect. Thanks, Alice. Um, a little introduction for myself. I'm an experienced enterprise architect and developer with over 20 years of experience uh, designing mission-critical enterprise uh, solutions built on a Microsoft stack. Um, my focus is applying architectural and software principles and patterns with uh, specific expertise in service-oriented and domain architectures, uh, data, mo data modeling, and uh, platform architecture development. Um, one of my focuses throughout my career has always been on uh, mentoring colleagues, as well as learning and sharing uh, knowledge about uh, new technologies. In this sense, it was a dapper. Um, who is Sharper Image? Uh, Sharper Image is an e-commerce company uh, that provides customers in the United States uh, with unique and engaging shopping experience, offering the latest in home electronics, air purifiers, and other lifestyle products. And yes, that was written by marketing. Um, I was hired in the summer of 2001, um, and just as our team had completed the transition to the second version of an internal microservices framework. It wasn't a sidecar, it was a uh, a new get package that was included with the microservices. At that time, they were deploying this framework on a newly, a newly set up uh, EKS Kubernetes cluster in AWS. My role alongside with a talented team of developers was to maintain and involve that microservice framework and the microservices that use that framework, along with ensuring the stability and scalability of our AWS infrastructure. Um, we worked together to continue to improve the platform by addressing challenges we faced with performance and scaling and ultimately explored ways to streamline our operations. Um, our collaborative efforts were key to maintaining the infrastructure, troubleshooting issues, and optimizing performance. The teamwork also allowed us to make inform, in, informed decisions, such as the choice to adopt Dapper, which became pivotal in simplifying our architecture and scaling needs. Early in January of 2022, uh, we had our technology roadmap meeting. We had, our team had identified several issues we wanted to address in our internal framework. We wanted to address these as well as ideas helped in helping to stabilize our Kubernetes deployment. The CEO at the time told us that he liked our ideas in stabilizing the Kubernetes deployment. However, he wanted us to sunset the internal microservice framework. To say the least, I was shocked. Uh, the team had just spent three plus years converting the entire project to ASP.NET Core and implementing this framework. And now we were tasked with finding a solution, a replacement solution. When I began evaluating new solutions, I had these thoughts in mind. I wanted to reduce the complexity of the in-house microservices framework. Initially, our framework was built to support the architecture but over time, managing and scaling it became increasingly complex, consuming valuable developer time and resources that uh, could have been sent better on our core business functionality. Also, I wanted to improve the developer productivity. Onboarding new developers became challenging because of the steep learning curve of our in-house framework. It required a significant time to effort to configure and maintain. I wanted to also be able to run unit tests and integration tests, but because of the architecture of our, our in-house framework, it was very difficult to do this. I also wanted to uh, reduce the operational performance bottlenecks. Our system 
experienced several inefficiencies, including high CPU usage and memory usages that uh, negatively impacted our performance during peak periods like uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I also wanted to be able to have our developers have a greater focus on our core business applications and our core customer needs. Ultimately, building and maintaining the microservice framework was not aligned with this core business. And therefore, we wanted to shift our focus to developing customer-centric features. So getting started with Dapper. Um, since we were working with an existing application, we were initially unsure how to approach integrating with Dapper. In early 2022, I reached out to Yaron Schneider, one of the creators of Dapper. And after a few insightful conversations, Yaron generously offered to host a hackathon in Portland for myself and another senior developer from Sharper Image. The goal was to convert one of our microservices to use Dapper. We began by initially initializing our Kubernetes cluster with Dapper, setting the foundation for our experiment. Our first task was to convert service to service communication through gRPC. The process was straightforward. We added the necessary changes to the manifest YAML files for deploying our application to Kubernetes to ensure that the Dapper sidecar was included. Next, we modified our code to include metadata on the gRPC client, following allowing Dapper to handle the service-to-service service service communication seamlessly. After these few changes, we had our service up and running with Dapper in a matter of minutes. After we adopted Dapper, we also prioritized standardizing our CI-CD workflow. Previously, our in-house framework also had a CLI, which involved complex manual steps frequently caused confusion and deployment issues by integrating Bitbucket pipelines with Dapper simplified our deployment configurations. We were able to automate the entire process, ensuring consistent error-free deployments. This transition not only streamlined our, our pipeline, but also reduced risk of human error, enabling us to efficiently convert all of our microservices to Dapper for service-to-service service -service communication, secrets management, PubSub, state management, and our CICD operations. Which brings me to our Commerce Cloud. Our implementation we've named Commerce Cloud at Sharper Image. We manage an ASP.NET Core based headless e commerce platform that processes over 80,000 daily orders during peak periods. Our architecture consists of over 70 microservices deployed on Kubernetes, as well as a few services that are deployed through uh, AWS Lambdas. Um, let me talk a little bit about this diagram here and what we see. So like I said, we are using AWS to host our, our cloud uh, services here inside of an EKS cluster. Uh, we have a load balancer that goes in through Nginx that I've dapperized. That Nginx instance will communicate with an internal proxy service that we have created. And then that internal proxy service communicates through to all the other services via MTLS through gRPC. Um, and also I, I saw some questions on Outbox. We implemented Outbox prior to Dapper having Outbox built into it. We do have a few POCs going right now using the Dapper Outbox that are going quite well. But what we did is we used the Dapper State Store to write to a DynamoDB Outbox, as you can see here. And the Outbox has a trigger set on it that was read by a, sends messages to a Lambda. The Lambda formats it internally to what we have them. Uh, the messages we're using a mixture of cloud events and a special internal event messages envelope to send messages to Kafka. And from there, our services consume them. Uh, we're using open search for our queries and using SQL Server to persist a lot of our data in there. Let's move on now. Okay, going into a little bit deeper into each one of these services that we're using here. We use gRPC services, gRPC for service-to-service -service communication, uh, but integrating into our in-house framework required a complex configuration and a uniquely designed SQL Server tables. By adopting Dapper, we were able to replace all that complexity with, with Dapper's service-to-service -service 
uh, invocation APIs. This allowed us to remove a custom built components while dapper sidecar architecture ensured that our services could easily communicate with each other, regardless of their technology stacks. We use Nginx as an ingress controller with Dapper Sidecar in the same pod, allowing it to request into the cluster to be routed through Dapper's AP service invocation API and using Dapper's MTLS encryption. Also the metrics and tracing telemetry gets routed to Zipkin locally on the developer's machines when they're using it and to Datadog in production. The secrets management. Um, managing sensitive information such as API keys, database credentials, external service secrets was a significant challenge for us. Um, we initially relied on environment variables uh, and manual processes to rotation and security. With Dapper, we centralized our secret management by integrating with Kubernetes Secret Store with Dapper's secret API. Uh, this approach has not only enhanced security, but also reduced operational risk by ensuring that secrets can be securely accessed by all services. Additionally, we transitioned from a manually process uh, passing a secrets YAML file to storing our secrets in AWS parameter store and encrypting them with a KMS key. We then use another open source project called External Secrets to synchronize the production secrets to the production K, uh, Kubernetes cluster and the development secrets to the development cluster, streamlining the entire process. To ensure reliable event messaging, we implemented the outbox pattern using Dapper's state management component to DynamoDB. We guaranteed that messages were consistently stored and processed even in the case of service failures. This was a significant improvement over our previous approach. And like I said, we do have a POC going where we're actually using Dapper for Outbox. But as you can see, we implemented it as an external feature in a Lambda that is triggered off of changes in DynamoDB. The transactional Outbox pattern is a, sing well, is a single transaction that spans across databases and the message broker delivering the notification. In the case, since Lambda functions are not hosted in K8s and Kubernetes, there's no Dapper sidecar here. So we are using raw messages here. And in most cases, there are some cases where we still use, we're still able to use uh, cloud events, but not many. Um, Dapper apps are able to publish the raw events as well as cloud events. Performance, with our solution in place, we were able to shift our focus to optimizing performance and scaling the platform. One of the key priorities at Sharper Image was to ensure that our microservices performed efficiently while being able to scale and handle peak traffic periods. By adopting Dapper and Kubernetes, we achieved significant improvements in both performance and scalability. The transition to Dapper helped us simplify our architecture, resulting in a 99% reduction in CPU usage. You can see that in the bottom graph. I actually thought that I killed these microservice when I deployed it. Before adopting Dapper, our microservices consumed high levels of CPU and memory, which made scaling a challenge. We would encounter significant issues when it's scaling up, particularly with our services, and this is internal to us, losing, our, losing their instance registration. This issue prevented messages from being processed, which caused major disruptions. After implementing Dapper, we were able to address these challenges effectively. Now we can scale our services up and down, up or down based on demand without worrying about missed events or lost instance registrations. Resilience is another area where Dapper and Kubernetes have played a key role. By leveraging Dapper's sidecar architecture, we decoupled our services, reducing risk single failure causing widespread disruption. Dapper's pub sub and state management components further ensure that messages were readily processed, even if one service went down temporarily. The resiliency allows us to maintain high availability during critical sales periods 
when traffic spikes dramatically. We continue to monitor our microservices using Datadog as well as Diagrid's conductor to track CPU, memory, network usage, and the health of our Dapper components. These insights enable us to make target adjustments to both Dapper and our microservices. We can fine tune the system for optimal performance and regular reviews of resource usage helps us strike a balance between performance and infrastructure cost, always ensuring efficient operations. Now that we've uh, transitioned to Dapper, there were a few learning opportunities along the way. Um, one of them was understanding that Dapper components have scope and how to properly use that scope inside the Dapper YAML files. Since we use gRPC communications, including gRPC for PubSub, we initially encountered situations where <clears throat> topics were being delivered to services that weren't configured to handle them. We also had a minor configuration issue with a PubSub during a Dapper update, which temporarily prevented our services from running as expected. But with the help of the Dapper community, we were able to quickly identify and resolve the problem. To avoid similar issues in the future, we now rely on Diagrid's conductor to validate our configurations and ensure that everything is set up correctly. A summary of what we talked about. We've seen significant reduction in CPU and memory usage from going from our internal microservices framework to Dapper, which allows us to scale our nodes in Kubernetes much more efficiently. Um, we don't use any automated scaling. Everything we do is usually pretty manual at this point. We have looked at looking at using some other technologies to manually scale or automate scaling our applications based on load. It's also improved our resiliency um, with its built-in resiliency, well, with its resiliency um, API. And also it's made our developers more efficient. We're not having to worry about the intricacies of our in-house framework, how we have to change some stuff in a, a massive YAML file, as well as a, a JSON file to scale and to make changes to that framework. Um, overall, we are very happy with our decision to adopt Dapper. It has significantly simplified our microservice architecture, reduced operational overhead, and improved both scalability and resiliency. By centralizing service service communication, secrets management, state management for outboxes, and PubSub, Dapper has achieved, Dapper helped us achieve substantial performance gains and cost savings. The shift has allowed our team to focus more on delivering customer value rather than managing the complexities of a custom-built microservices framework. Going forward, we're excited to continue leveraging Dapper to efficiently scale our platform and meet the grant demands of our growing business. And that's all I have. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, uh, Aaron. Um, I did see some questions on um, uh, on YouTube, which yes. you you can might help clarify. So one of the questions was uh, you you showed those two diagrams with with the mm -hmm. CPU uh, load, um, and then some uh, someone was asking on how how can Dapper actually reduce the, um, the the CPU load? So could you be clarify it a bit more? Right. So our <clears throat> excuse me, our internal framework um, was basically just running multiple loops. It was just on an infinite loop and you could scale it to run multiple infinite loops. And all I was doing was just reading, 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 trying to get messages off of the uh, Kafka queue. And then it was persisting some state data and then there would be some challenges with that. But basically you could run an infinite number of infinite loops. And as soon as we switched to Dapper and just said, you know, okay, here, Dapper, here's the route, here's the topic send it through to you know an HTTP endpoint or to a gRPC um, method in our case. 
yeah, so it was also important to sort of have to, to, to offload some of the responsibility from your application to the Depper sidecar then, right? So I think right, it's exactly. important to realize. And it would also, like we, we would have to run like five, six copies, sometimes 10 copies of these services just to be able to keep up with it. And because of that, now a lot of our services are scaled down to, you know, two, three, just to keep resiliency, I guess, with three. But that, that's it, really. We were able to reduce the number of processes running. We were able to reduce the amount of process that each service is using. 